Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm going to work on a reel that Jim brought by the shop. It's a big one. It's the uh, Daiwa Sea Line 60H. Now, believe it or not, I have even a bigger one. I have the Sea Line 900H. That's approximately the size of a 90 reel, but it's even bigger. And uh, the reason I've mentioned that is I was going through the paperwork on this, and I found that um, there was a reference to 1979 in the catalog that's in the box. And so when I, when I asked the date, when is this reel from? It's the late 70s or the uh, early 80s. Who knows how many times they reprinted the catalog, but we're going to take this reel apart. This is the big brother to the 50H, which I believe, in my own thinking, is one of the best reels ever made, almost bulletproof, and this one is as well. And uh, just a big reform factor, but essentially the same engineering. So Jim dropped this one by. He asked me if I could change out the drag washers. He went out and got those. And you can just see by the size of these washers and the thickness of those washers, well, they're not just generally going to wear down from fighting a fish or two. But at any rate, we're going to take these apart. I'll show you how this reel comes together, how it was made, why it's so reliable and dependable. And uh, well, along the way, maybe we'll talk about a few things with that. So we're going to remove the exterior pieces. As I do, I want to ask you all to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. If you like reel repair, if you like seeing how reels are serviced, like learning a little bit about those reels, well, then uh, subscribing will ensure that you uh, get a chance to see which ones I'm posting. And uh, if you hit that notification button, you'll know exactly when a new one is posted and you'll be able to make a decision as to whether that's something you want to uh, go view and work on all kinds of uh, reels. This one happens to be a big ocean reel. So on the, uh, the 50, uh, 50H, form factor is the same, smaller capacity. But all of these have a graphite case and all of these have an anodized aluminum spool. Very, uh, very nicely made in the materials. We're going to take off the side plate. Now if you um, have any issues getting these screws out, sometimes they become salt encrusted and the, uh, the screws become difficult to remove. By all means spray these down with a penetrating oil before you go too far into the service. Let them sit and then uh, come back and uh, try to remove them later. Don't try to force anything. Those graphite cases, it's always a little bit tough. Now these, I believe, have threaded inserts in the case. Sometimes the metal and the, the two different metals, sometimes they don't mesh well together. And, uh, well, it's just better to be cautious, particularly with a reel of this age. So. For a reel that's probably 40 years old now, it uh, looks like it's in sh very nice shape. And uh, Jim just said that he would like to have those washers replaced. He didn't tell me if he's been fishing this reel or if uh, something else has been going on with the reel. All he asked was that uh, I go ahead and change those drag washers out. All right, you can see just how big and massive this is. There's a ball bearing in each side plate. Those need to be cleaned. You can still get that bearing if you need it. It's a standardized bearing. And uh, if you need to go ahead and reorder, you can. There's not much going on there. There's a click mechanism. Make sure that that click tongue is OK. Make sure your frame is clean. And this one is very clean. And just go ahead and put a, a drop of oil in there. And then on the other side here, I do like to, to put a little bit of grease right onto the stud of that click ratchet right there and uh, that'll help to uh, keep them lubricated against that inner race of the bearing. We'll come back and we'll make sure that we put grease on the main stud too but not not quite yet. All right this is the almost identical setup to the 50H just the parts are bigger and that's uh, very similar to the way Penn has built their reels. Notice you have three of these are kind of anchor pieces and one of them actually goes into the bridge. So when you're taking these apart, make certain that you note the locations of them. One of the things that's always good when you take a reel apart for service is to take pictures along the way. That's what I'm doing here. 
you're using a video camera. You don't need to use the video camera, but uh, take the pictures as reference points so that you know where it's going, when it's going. Okay, I'm thinking that this spring mechanism is part of the bridge and that you do not need to, to change it out. You will need to change it out when we go to reinstall because that needs to set, but uh, for now I think we're okay. And we might even get lucky, we might be able to set it without it. You notice that I just laid the screws onto my table, and that's to make sure that I've identified where the screws go. Now there's three that are short screws, or there's two that are short screws, and one that's a long screw. Maybe this one's a short screw as well. It is. So the three that have the cups, <clears throat> those are the short screws, and the one attaches to the bridge is the long screw. As I take these apart, they go into my parts tray. I use the bottom of a hook jug uh, sometimes. I, this time around I'm using a, uh, a fast food container. But regardless, do something that helps you organize the pieces and the parts. We should just be able to push this bridge through now. I'm going to cut my hand just in case that spring decides it wants to fly. And I think what we have here is we have a little bit of tightness with these cups. So I'm just going to go ahead and use a, a screwdriver here just to pry them out a little bit. There we go. Now we can push that through. And you can see exactly how this is going to come together and kind of come apart. And uh, big reel overall. And here's your anti-reverse dog mechanism that we are talking about. I'm going to take that spring off right now just because I don't want to lose that spring. We'll take out that drag stack. And we have on this one, we have two C-clips holding the yoke springs in. So this is a good place for a picture so that as you go to reinstall, well, you know how it goes. These things should simply press down and push out. And you can usually do this by with hand strength. Sometimes it might be a little bit more difficult, or depending on the hand strength that you have. So I'm going to cover these. As you can see, I don't want these C clips or E clips springing far. Take that, and that's going to go into the parts tray. We got one on the other side. We'll do the same thing. Maybe I can do it this way to show you what I'm doing. So I'm just kind of walking that E-clip out. I've kind of gone to one of those indentations, used a, a little awl to do that, and now we'll remove the second spring, put that into the tray. That's going to enable me to take the yoke, the jack, and the anti-reverse off. <coughs> we've got to do that because we want to get a good cleaning on that. And then we're going to see if we can knock out the pin that is holding that center shaft together. I'm just going to grab it. We may or may not be able to do that here. Most of the time I can't. So I'm going to take these three pieces out of here. See if I can push this through. Usually on a reel that's 40 years old, they get, they get stuck in there pretty good. So let me show you what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to do it, and it's going to be off camera. I'm just going to grab a soft blow hammer, a pick like this. Oh, look at that, didn't even have to be off camera. And the littlest tap got it to move. You can see the pin coming through here. Just push that through. And you want to do that because there's going to be all kinds of old greases and that on the shaft. And you want to make sure that the shaft gets cleaned. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to take the anti-reverse dog and I'm going to wipe that down so that it's clean. Get all the old dried greases off of it. And then I'm just going to put that in the parts tray. This is the smaller diameter one that belongs to the anti-reverse dog. And we have the two bigger ones that go up top here. That's where pictures help. I get those off my table and take that pin, put the pin back into that gear sleeve, 
that way I won't lose that. Just get it started. And let's give a spray to this bridge so that we can get all that old grease off. When I'm removing the greases, I like to use the least abrasive method possible in terms of getting the old grease off. In this case, it's just penetrating oil and it's a paper towel. If I needed more, I would go to a kitchen scrubby and then perhaps 4 0 steel wool. That comes up nicely. I'm going to do the same thing here with this piece. First off, we have a lot of dry grease right on the base here. Clean that up, and then I've got a little bit inside. I'm going to run a cotton swab inside to get off the, uh, the old grease that's in the shaft there. Once you do that, you can grab a fishing reel grease. I use pen precision reel grease. I don't care which one you use, but I do care that you use a fishing reel grease. A little bit onto the shaft. Got a little bit of grease on the outside here that I can get to, so let's go ahead and clean that off. That's the click ratchet for the anti-reverse dog back there. Now we can go ahead and reinstall that. Set that corner in there. Make sure that that little pin clears that ridge. And that's kind of done. So let's go and reset the uh, gear with new dry washers. Looks like he gave me a set, but I don't see that small uh, dry washer for the back, so we're going to have to reuse that one. Got this from Smooth Drags. I use Smooth Drags and I recommend them. SmoothDrags.com. They are. Uh, good provider for replacement pieces and parts including the dry washers and burrings. So if you need them, don't be afraid to use them. Well, we did. There you go. We got that uh, replacement bottom washer, so we'll go ahead and put that in. This, these are hard. It doesn't say what they are, other than they're hard. We have a clean case. Just to make sure, you know, I'm going to use some steel wool on this, metal on metal. And that's just tarnished. And then I'm going to use a hard bristle brush to clean out the cavities on the teeth on that main gear. I pull it down so that any dirt that I'm pulling out lands on this paper towel and does not uh, land on my bench to be transferred to the next wheel. All right, there you go. There's one more. Now, if you, if you found that you had particularly stubborn uh, grease, go ahead and use something like this pick. This is just a Harbor Freight dollar pick. But go ahead and use something like that if, it, if you find that it's all uh, congealed. All right, a little bit of grease. So much of fishing reel repair is just cleaning, parts inspection, relubrication. In this case, we're a little bit of a replacement on the drag washers, and that's fine too. All right, I don't have to get it in an all-way. We'll spread around. And bring that down. Here's our three new ones. You can tell that the old ones have kind of stuck. It was time for replacement. I think the old ones were leather. The new ones don't appear to be leather. These are kind of stuck. And so what you want to do with the old ones, just kind of set them to the side. If you wanted to, these are good enough. They still have enough meat on them that they could uh, be reused. But in this case, we're just going to go ahead and do this per the customer's request. If you were going to reuse those leather washers, you would need to put a a drag washer grease on them. In this case, I think we got Carbon Tex washers here. There seems to be something because there's some kind of writing on the back of it which tells me that it's a hard washer, period. And uh, we're going to go ahead now and reinstall the, the drag stack. Notice that we have two keyed washers. They're almost square in the center, but one of them is thicker. The thicker is the top plate. Let's go ahead and put that in. But the thinner of the washers in. 
I put the second one on. These can go in dry because of the, the nature of the material. Now you have what's called the ear washer. That goes in the middle and it rests in the slots of the main drag. And we have the top washer and we have the thicker of that. So that's your drag stack for the reel. You come over here, we'll clean the cases. The reel overall is, is pretty clean. We're going to use this to mop up and the excess greases. You see some greases on that bearing. I'm going to test the bearing just to make sure it's running fine. If you can do this and see your inner race is turning, you're in good condition there. I oil bearing, so we're going to soak that. I'm going to come over and clean this yoke because that's got the greases on it as well. I'm going to use the steel wool for this. Actually, you can use a screwdriver flat side of a screwdriver to scrape some of that away. That saves you a little bit of time. Again, whatever tools you use, make sure that you take the grease off of them. You don't want to transfer the grease to your next project. Okay, we'll do the same thing here with the pinion gear. In this case, this pinion gear is very clean. And we'll do the same thing. We'll grab that hard brush and pull it through those gear teeth. And uh, any of the stuff that's kind of chirping out here goes right on top. Well, it's about time to get rid of that paper towel. And we can go now and we can reset this trip mechanism. Okay, once you've reloaded your main gear, let's go up top to the, the pinion gear and yoke. For that, we're going to need those two pieces for your uh, bridge. And you know that those that go in the bridge are going to have a, a square bottom on it, so you need to make sure that they seat in there. And then next up, you're going to revert, invert this because the slot is going to face down. You drop that down. Now we need our two springs, and we also need that yoke. Let's go ahead and put that spring in. We're just going to get this yoke started here. Just like that. Now we need the Eclipse, and this is going to require me to take that glove off. You want to compress the spring and load the Eclipse. And most of the time you can do this with hand strength, sometimes you can't. In this case I can't, so I'm just going to look for a little bit of an assist here pliers. And pull it in. And then you want to make sure when you do that that the three claws of the E-clip are seated in that, uh, that groove section there. We'll do that one more time. I think this back one just fell out of square. There we go. And you want to get the E-clip again. Compress the spring. Get it started. And in this case, I'm just going to use this little Interestingly enough, in that box that I have with the 900, they gave you two more of these clips. So my guess is people shoot these clips. Now, I can't get that by hand strength, so we're going to do this again. With the pliers. So while I'm playing around with this, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, if you leave them in the comments section, I will try to answer those questions for you. And uh, I try to answer them at the end of the day, so please be patient. I said the end of the day, it's really the beginning of the next day that uh, I try to do that. So um, I do try to get back to you. It's becoming a little bit more difficult just through the popularity of the channel and the number of questions that I'm getting. 
but I do try to do that and I will try to respond to you. Let's go ahead and mount this. I'm going to take the brush with the grease on it, make sure that we get some on the eccentric. And now, for the most part, oops, that was an oops. We got the uh, third reverse dog. So this is the last one of the, the pins. I want to make sure that that properly seats. I want to make sure that you get the dog in and on. And now we can take that spring, put the spring on. And then we'll be ready to mount it. There we go. And if we turn this now, we should have a functioning anti-reverse, which we do. I hear that click, click, click. With any luck now, we should just be able to line these holes up with the holes in the case. And just install accordingly. Oh, that was almost like a Staples commercial. That was easy. Well, for the most part it was easy. Not quite in on the top pieces. But we'll play around with it. I'm going to invert that to get the long one in so that we can anchor that. Oh, wrong one, wrong side. Put that so I can anchor the bridge. That's the long one. And what we said, we have three shorts and a long. The next one I want to put in then is the one for the anti-reverse. I don't want to lose that assembly. Okay, just continue until you Finish tightening all of them up, and then just check, make sure everything is firm on the back side of this. So really with this one you, you assemble the entire bridge and then you place it into the cavity. That's a little bit different than the way it was. Okay, these three are firm, stud on there, flush here, anti-reverse attached. This one's running away it should with new drag washers. All right, just a little bit of grease up top here where you couldn't get it before. That's for your free spool to come in and out. We've got those two tension washers. Those go next. They give you a little bit of variability in the performance of your star adjuster. Then we have the collar, and then we have the star adjuster. And if you find that you're spinning like that, just light pressure on the inside. Don't go crazy. There's threads in there. You don't want to rip the threads up. And this little light pressure will help you do it until you can use that handle as a wrench. I'm going to come over now. We promised you that we would put some grease onto the spool shaft before we put the rest of the assembly on. That's because you can't get grease into the side of this. Now we'll put the plate on. There's also the harness lug here that goes on when you're doing this. And that should snap into place. And I think we pretty much have it there. And I'm going to use my pick to align the holes, make sure that we're in the right holes. And now we have those exterior screws. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, but three of these screws are long and two of these screws are short. The long screws go on the three top positions. They go into the crossbars. The two shorter screws, and they're about a quarter inch difference between the screws, they go into the real seat at the base. So this is comparable to Penn's 60 size reel. This is a 600. It's about right, the, uh, about the same size. It's bigger than the Penn 40. And uh, actually, Jim brought me a 6.0 to go service as well. And uh, actually, I'm going to do that next, but I have enough videos on the 6.0 that uh, that one won't make it to film. All right, then we have two short ones. They go below. We'll get real close here to uh, a 
just checking this. That's interesting. All right. So I put that on, but we're going to take that off because, well, I thought that one goes between the um, star adjuster and the blade, but there's no way that it can do that because of that indentation there. So we'll put the put it below. You know, it came out of the reel. It's got to go back into the reel, and that's the only way it's going to go back on. We'll do this again. I have one more screw. That's where my parts trays a good uh, partner. And actually, I can look into my parts tray and see that I only have two more pieces, three more pieces. And that's the best of all. You know, if you've left your parts tray empty, that, uh, well, all the parts are back on the reel. Or at least, hopefully, they're all back on the reel. All right, now we will uh, tighten this down, put the handle on it. Now we have that tension plate that can go on there now. I'm going to put it in the middle here. I'm not quite sure if he had it fully leveraged or not. I'm going to use the Pen 60 wrench. I hope that it works. This handle nut was loose taking it off. Yep, it's the same size as the, the pen wrench. Thank goodness. And you want to align that scallop in that nut with the tie down screw portion. And I'm still in a little bit of trouble there. So I'm going to go to the other wrench that I have. There we go. And now we can add that screw and all the pieces and parts will be back on. The wheel will have been cleaned. It will have been relubricated. It will have all of the parts inspected and it will be ready to go fishing again. All right, that's in. Let's go to free spool first on the test. I love these reels. Ball bearings on each side. That is just one solid reel circa 1979. Nice smooth crank. If you needed to adjust your spool, this is your spool tensioner, but that's it. That is your Daiwa Sea Line 600H large size saltwater trolling reel, and this one's a beauty. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please like it. To all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. Everybody. I wish you great fishing. Please stay safe, stay well, and have a wonderful day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.